Half a day, the Committee on General Government Operation Appropriation Housing is now reconvening on Bill 200 as 36 UR from recess on Thursday, October 7, 2021. Today is Tuesday, October 12th, 2021. And the time now is 4.43. Welcome to everyone connected by Zoom and those tuning in via television or the YouTube channel. Thank you for your patience and for commenting the Zoom platform while we maintain social distancing mandates. Notice to reconvene. Uh, we're disseminating via email to all centers and all main media broadcasting hours on Thursday, October 7th, and on Friday, October 8th. The uh, bill will be entertained this, this afternoon is uh, bill number 200-36-COR, introduced by myself, Senator Joe S. Oxen, co-sponsored by Senator Amanda Shelton. An act to appropriate $10 million from the 2021 Earned Income Tax Credit Reimbursement to the Guam Visitors Bureau for the purpose of funding operation, infrastructure improvements, and destination development. The rules of uh, conduct for this hearing is the Zoom meeting is hosted by my staff and we meet all Zoom participants until called upon by myself. Members of the committee and or non-committee members will be allowed to pose a question to any individual that have testified. Individuals testifying shall first be recognized by myself before speaking and begin by stating their name for record keeping purposes when called to speak. Please ensure that you are unmuted. If not, we'll assist you. Questions and testimonies shall be confined to the substance or the nature of the agenda. Personal inference as to the character or the motive of any senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of this general rule of conduct will result in a move from the virtual public hearing. Please ensure that your video remains on throughout the hearing. Participants must be visible at all times and not engage in any activity during the hearing. Failure to maintain visibility may cause your move from the meeting live stream. Um, if any of my, if anyone attending needs to take a drink, please feel free to drink, eat a snack, but don't have a full meal while we're having this, all right? I appreciate it. I'd like to thank my colleagues for attending this afternoon hearing. And we have, uh, let's see who we have. We have. Senator Amanda Shelton, my co-sponsor, that co-sponsor of the bill. We have uh, Senator Frank Bloss Jr. We have Senator James Morton. We have Senator Tello Tidegree. We have Senator Joanne Brown. We have also attending the hearing to testify is uh, former Governor Carl Gutierrez. Uncle Carl, thank you, sir. We have uh, Uncle Jerry Paris. Thank you, sir. We have Josie uh, Villanueva. We have Nico, Nico Fujikawa. And we got Willie Flores, uh, Senator Flores. Thank you for joining us. And um, just to begin this bill, you know, that this uh, bill number 236 is an act to appropriate $10 million from the 2021 Earned Income Tax Credit Reimbursement to the Guam Business Bureau for the purpose of funding operation, infrastructure improvement, and destination development. We are very much aware that Guam's tourism industry is an economic driver, helping the island flourish with employment and business that work hard to extend. Excuse the half a day spirit for our tourists and islanders alike. Our island has welcomed over 1 million tourists in years previous to the COVID 19 pandemic. And recently, due to a few to no tourist arrivals, the industry has suffered greatly, affecting many of our island businesses and hardworking employees. A Disney tourism is working towards recovery, and this is an opportune time for our industry leaders at the Guam Beach Group to roll up their sleeves and work in reinvigorate in reinvigorating the face of our island and tourism venues in preparation of the return of our beloved tourists and for our local population to enjoy. It is our goal that with the federal government reimbursement of Guam and the income, earned income tax credit program in 2021, we will be helping our community and our economy through this bill and appropriating $10 million for reimbursement from the reimbursement to the Guam Business Bureau for the purpose of funding operation, infrastructure, improvement, and destination development. Now, with, I want to thank, thank my co-sponsor, Senator Amanda Shelton, for her support. I look forward to hearing the testimony in today's hearing. I appreciate your participating in Sidzus Masi. We will begin with um, the GDB folks, and I believe uh, we will start with the governor, uh, Governor Carl Gutierrez, sir. Unmute Nada. Now, what another mic move? Thank you, Governor. Okay, sorry. That's, that's from Tide. We did that. 
Thank you, Senator Sanatini, Mr. Chairman, uh, for allowing us this. Uh, this morning, we had an excellent uh, public hearing with uh, Senator Amanda Shelton, Amanda Lee Shelton, um, and uh, we um, we expect that this is going to be the same. I mean, with you both on the uh, the uh, sponsorship of this bill, uh, votes well for the passage of this bill, and uh, I think it's going to go a long ways. However, I just want to, I forgot to tell you before you introduced it that uh, we, we left out a million dollars more, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Josie's happy with that remark. But Senator, uh, the um, jo Jerry and, uh, and, and crew and Josie is particularly have, uh, you know, have gone through putting this, this bill, uh, this breakdown together. And the one thing that I, I really wanted to emphasize that's brand new in the, in, in the inclusion, uh, besides uh, giving attention to the mayors, is the, is the, um, the shelter up at, at uh, JFK. Because I've per personally met, witnessed twice, uh, particularly during the, um, the, the advent of the Airbnb arrivals from Taiwan, where they, they were really heading up to, to, to uh, to go across uh, to Kmart and were caught there in the sun and one I saw in the rain. So uh, this is really going to be a well-designed uh, edifice that will uh, certainly uh, do well for, for, for uh, you know, the uh, aesthetics and also promote the, uh, the, uh, the cultural aspect of what it would look like. It's just in itself a little bit of a tourist uh, 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 building, uh, denoting the cultural centric Guam that we're hoping to come back to uh, since the 1970s. And uh, we told that to Senator Shelton this morning uh, that uh, we uh, have a, a longer range plan other than this $10 million uh, that uh, we will hopefully uh, be unveiling in the next three weeks. Uh, this is the vision of the governor, and we're trying to uh, make sure that uh, we, got, we, we gathered it well from the way she explained it to us. So uh, Jerry Paris and Nico uh, have been working with the staff diligently for the last three weeks and putting this thing together. But for the meantime, this $10 million is going to be very, very helpful to, uh, to GDB in uh, uh, putting back some of the money we had used before. And if you'll notice, we have removed some because of the fact that, uh, that some of those monies have been restored already. Uh, Willie will, of course, maybe give you the update on the Matapan project. Uh, it was very, very uh, uh, heartening to get the $13.8 million grant that Public Works put together to, to begin the process there. So I would like to defer now to Jerry uh, Paris and uh, Josie to uh, to begin uh, uh, the testimony. Jerry? Yes, Mr. Paris, please, Uncle Jerry. Okay, can you hear me? Sure can, sure. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, President Carl. Uh, before I uh, <clears throat> read our prepared statement, I'd just like to say uh, as a prelude that similar to what we mentioned this morning, a lot of money has been spent on Tumon Bay and it's, it's, it's right that we do that because we all know that Tumon Bay is the centerpiece and the center stage of our tourism industry. But I would tell you that the heartbeat, the heartbeat of our destination is the rest of the island, the villages and the, and the people of Guam. And it is important for us to remember that delivering a destination experience is the island of Guam. Tumon Bay is not Guam. Tumon Bay is center stage, but the real destination experience of Guam is the rest of the island. And it's with that theme and that in mind that we've put together this list of projects to try to bring to life uh, the heartbeat of our destination. So thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, share our thoughts with you this morning and to testify in support of Bill 200-36 an act to appropriate $10 million from the 2021 Earned Income Tax Credit Reimbursement to Guam Visitors Bureau for the purpose of funding operations infrastructure and uh, destination development. Since the bill's introduction, as uh, President Carl alluded to earlier, 
new developments have arisen in our request for capital improvement projects. Working very closely with our island mayors, we have identified several key projects that can help the perpetuation and display of our culture. Village festivals help build and bind a community together and having a centralized location with the information and the proper infrastructure for communication is essential to the success of this program and to the future growth in the different areas of Guam. As listed below, facility renovations, communication improvements, and safety enhancements at the village level will help our island achieve the goal of expanding tourism beyond Tumon, thereby enriching the Guam destination visitor experience. Most of our visitors see Guam through the prism of Tumon Bay, which as I said earlier, is the center stage of our tourism industry. But we all know that Tumon Bay is not Guam and that the heartbeat of Guam is the rest of the island and the villages and the people who make up our island destination experience. And the richness of the island's destination as enhanced by various attractions, personal interaction with the people of Guam and the different events and activities that we have to offer. So in terms of the island-wide village signs and monuments uh, section, we would like funding to really restore a lot of the scenic signs and information highway signs that over the years have disappeared either because of bad weather or because of accidents or whatever. The fact of the matter is we need to really restore scenic signs and informational highway signs. I think it's also important to have a consistent um, silhouette announcing the entry of every village on the, on, on the island and to replace and repair a lot of the dilapidated ones. Because these, these um, entry points can be points of interest markers for each village. And we wanted to develop the digital capacity to describe village attractions and events. We would propose to do this by having a QR code at the entrance of each village. And this QR code would describe the entire village, the kinds of events and activities that take place in the village and anything of interest that might be important uh, for each village mayor to articulate um, to our visitors. Secondly, we have a number of World War II commemorative memorials that um, I will list down in quick order and then ask uh, afterwards if Willie can expand on these attractions because some of them, even I, am not very well acquainted with. So the first one is the Inalahan Memorial Monument. The second is the Kalagwak Barrigada Wall and Entrance Gate. The third one is the Lost Men of Hag Lost Men of Hagat Memorial. This is the Hagat and Cross Island Road. The Jigo Chaguian Entrance Marker and Memorial Plaque. Manengun Memorial Gathering Pavilion and Temporary uh, and Temp Bridge. Manilo Memorial Pavilion. Asan Memorial Marker and Pavilion. The PT. Uh, the Pungan Memorial Marker and Pavilion, and the Mogmun Totumaiti Memorial Monument. Um, I think, it, let me just finish through my prepared statement and then I will ask Willie if he can go uh, in, you know, line by line and explain each of these attractions. The third thing is we also wanted to um, improve and have installed a launching ramp for a boat launching ramp in uh, Talafofo Bay to be used by local fishermen as well as the department, uh, as well as the Guam Fire Department for use in time of emergencies. And then to uh, President Carl's point, the rain shelter uh, is important up uh, at the crossroads uh, across from JFK and uh, Kmart. So this has to do with the rain shelter, lighting, crosswalks, signage, and sidewalks. As an essential component of pedestrian safety infrastructure, 
and a critical standard by which GDB measures safety and security. Designated funding will allow key crosswalks in Tumon and Tamuning to be restored and improved with lighting, signage, bollards, and vehicle rumble strips. One area in particular adjacent to JFK High School will require shelter from the rain. This shelter will also serve students at JFK often stranded in the rain while waiting to cross Marine Corps Drive. With these new, with these new issues brought to light, the Bureau is requesting that the bill be amended to remove the following items which we had originally uh, listed uh, because the reason we would like it removed is either we feel it's of lesser priority or have already been funded from other sources. This list includes the Guam Visitors Bureau Library and Museum, the GVB renovations and upgrade, the GVB communications and information technology upgrades, security cameras and alarm systems, and um, the Matapan culvert cleaning, which is already being funded, the Matapan infiltration field repair and restoration, again, already funded, and the beach park bathroom and shower renovations and upgrades. Finally, the Bureau requests flexibility in managing this $10 million capital funding, so long as residual balances of each of these projects are spent in the listed projects above. The 2021 Earned Income Tax Credit Reimbursement is ideal to help GVB fund these much needed improvements. The downturn of tourism has left the TIF fund, GVB's primary source of funding, in a very, very dire and limited state of affairs. And it will take years for the TIF to recover to pre-pandemic levels. So we appreciate the 36th Guam legislature's support in allocation, rather in allocating these resources as we continue to work on our tourism and recovery efforts. Sejus Masi, and thank you for ensuring that we can continue making Guam a better place to live, work, and visit. And at this time, if I could ask uh, Willie to go ahead and describe the listed projects, perhaps starting with the uh, item on World War II commemorative memorials. All right, just, all right, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Uncle Jerry, Mr. Vice President, please be aware that um, you've listed some items there that has really been introduced, that's going that, to be addressed. And, um, I'm well, just that, yes, I understand. About the listing. Uh, I understand that, Senator. I think when, when we got the call from your office about the rescheduling, I had alerted your office to give you a heads up that some of these projects which have already been previously listed, we will be addressing and asking for uh, amendment because number one, either funding has already been um, found for it, or number right. two, we believe that they are of lesser priorities than the ones okay. that we have listed. So All right. uh, I wanted just to clarify that uh, for your benefit, Senator. All right, uh, Senator Willie, you, 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 got, you wanna break down and go through the list? And when, when, as you're identifying the list, um, I would appreciate if you can send the list to us right as soon as possible so we can put it up on, on the link so all the, my colleagues can see this. Because I hate to see you know, myself or any of the senators, my colleagues, writing down the numbers. And we need to get that and we need to be able to put it up. Go, get, go, go for it, Senator Willie. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Chairman St. Augustine, and thank you, um, um, uh, members of the legislature for allowing me to speak here. Most of you are very familiar with these sites. Um, we first started this program under Governor Gutierrez uh, doing the historical sites. Um, and I know that Senator Blas is very involved with uh, Manamco and, and um, Senator Shelton and Senator San Augustine, you've actually assisted us uh, in making sure that these sites are, are properly honored and, and not forgotten. So. What the, the relevance of this thing is that, you know, the uh, very important era in Guam's history happened during the period of World War II. Um, and believe it or not, the end of World War II, especially the march to uh, Manyangun and the march to, um, uh, the march to Manyangun and the march to some of the other places was a, a be, really basically the last thing that our people did together. It is very important. Uh, 
we, in doing this, we wanted to make sure that in, in pushing this program, we wanna make sure that what happened to our Manonku, what happened to those people who suffered uh, in the war, that it takes its proper place in our, in our history because our people need to know where we came from. I think those of you who have participated in these, uh, in these ceremonies, certainly yourself, uh, Chairman St. Augustine, and I know that um, again, Senator Blas and Senator Shelton, you have, you have, by participating, you have felt the depth of the meaning and the, uh, the importance of this thing. So what we want to do, the other thing that we found out as we we're going to this program is that the tourists uh, were coming, we were getting a lot of requests from tourists to take them to these sites, to take them to the sites that they had heard about. And so um, we requested GVB to include this on their list of um, include this in their list of I forgot what it was called at the time, but it was the it was supposed to be the trail, you know, the visit the uh, tour Guam trail, and uh, we were successful in getting the Manyangun site um, listed there. So that's actually part of GVB's uh, trail, and so as a result of that. We actually have, been, uh, have gotten many, many tourists, uh, mostly Japanese tourists, some Kore Korean tourists, but mostly Japanese tourists who have visited it uh, individually or by group. Um, and we've had certainly many groups come down. And, um, uh, you know, so this, this important part of history has to be maintained. Uh, in Inarahan, in Inarahan, many people don't know that the people of Inarahan were actually taken to concentration camps at a place called Pajestis, a place called Besbis, and I forget there's one other place that, and many of them were marched to Manyangun. Some of them had to go to Manyangun. Some were able to turn back. Some were marched to Maleso, um, and uh, you know, a certain march to Maleso, and and they were able to to make it back alive uh, at the same time that the uh, the massacres were occurring down there. So Inarahan deserves its place. Now here the issue with Inarahan is that Pajestis and Besbis are up in the hills. So we asked, the, we found a site, we, we found a site that is government of Guam property. It actually belongs to the Narahan mayor's office. And you can actually see these sites in the hills. You can see the tops of the hills from these sites. And um, it is down by the abandoned boat ramp or the never used boat ramp. Uh, this year we had a, the first ceremony down there and we would actually like to target uh, putting up the memorial by, by, um, by July of next year. And the importance of that site, again, is that's where many of the people, most of the people from Inalahan and Malolu were, uh, were taken to those places. The second site, as you move northward, is the, um, the second site that we're uh, move, as moving northward, of course, is the uh, Manyangun, Manyangun Memorial that most of you are familiar with. We actually have uh, quite a bit of property for the memorial there. What we don't have, and, and it's uh, very deep and very meaningful that we need to start doing is, many of the people who were buried there have never been located. Um, Governor Carl, your, your mother-in-law was buried there, never been located. And, and we hear this from, every, from people who lost relatives there, please try to find, find you know, if we can find them. So we request, you were, trying to put up a temporary bridge so we can get the archaeologists across to do that work. And that will also become part of the, um, part of the experience. Um, also, we have a, a pavilion. As you know, every year we gather there, we put up tents and all that, and that's fine. But there's no place for families really to come down and meditate. And many of them do. They come down and they meditate and, and, um, and, and, you know, and ponder the things that happen. And so this is part of the master plan that was uh, submitted to the Guam legislature, I believe back in 2002 uh, for the site. Um, and, and so this is just an, a component of that master plan um, that we need to, to continue pursuing. Across the island down in Hagat, of course, uh, we were able to successfully uh, construct the Hagat and dedicate the Hagat Memorial. Um, again, we, we're only at phase one of that memorial, uh, which is the fountain and the monument, the marker. Um, but we also need to finish that memorial and we also need to put up a memorial to the lost men of, of Hagat. Um, there were boys, that, young men that were taken from their families, um, taken towards Manyangun 
and up to uh, uh, Jordan, I mean, Tujigo, Chaguian, in that area, and they were never seen from again. So every year we dedicate a, a ceremony to the lost men of Haga, and we need to memorialize that because um, generations, you know, I was I want to say generations behind me, um, don't know that that happened. Don't know what are you talking about, lost men of Haga? What is that? Um, and so you know, this again, this important part of history has to be has to be taken into account. Up in uh, Manila, um, there was another concentration camp where Chamorros were taken, beaten, tortured. A lot of people don't know that. It is between the Manila Santa Teresita Church and the cliff line. So the only government property that we had um, available to us was at the mayor's office. So all we could do was put a monument, a monument marker facing that area. Um, that area now is covered, populated with houses and all that. Uh, we would like to put a canopy over that monument because it is used every year and it is quite visited. I, I understand from the folks that are there are quite well visited. Um, then over in Calaguac, Barragada, um, as many of you know, our people were put to work at both Oroti, working hard. I know that uh, Senator Frank Blas is very intimately familiar with all of this. Uh, our our um, people were put to work at Oroti building a landing strip for the Japanese. Our people were, were forced to work. Uh, forced labor and 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 some really agonizing and some not so nice stuff that that happened to our people over at Kalaga Cantizan, and you what you see there is phase one of that memorial. Um, we would like to put up phase two, which is the memorial seat wall and the um, and the archway entrance. And then moving forward to Jigo, Jigo, uh, we we've been trying for several years to get a monument. Uh, marker and a place marker at um, the entrance to the, the the entrance to the road going into Tsegrian. Um and we want to work with uh, with getting that. We want to work with DPW with getting a monument marker and a sign place there, and then a monument marker, a government property on the way in because it's really quite hard to find. And as you know, uh, Tsegrian along with uh, Faha, Tinta, and Fena. Uh, probably some of the most tragic uh, experiences that the people have, you know, that our people experience. Then moving over to Asan, uh, we've been working, I'm sorry, let's uh, go down to Mongmoto to Mighty. Uh, many people again don't know about the, um, the torture, really um, cruel stuff that happened down in uh, Utan, down below what, what you see there is the, uh, the Gura housing in Mongmo, down in that area in the swamp down there. Um, some really nasty stuff where it was done to our people. And, um, and you know, we, we need to make sure that our people do not forget that. Then moving over to, um, to Assam, we also have, uh, we also have the re recollections and the incidents that happened down in Assam where people were killed, people were tortured. Um, and then the same over in Piti where the group of men from Ag Hagat who were forced to go the other way along the western coast, um, several of them were killed there in uh, right next to the Maso River, where, what we know as the Santos Beach Park, uh, killed. And, um, you know, again, um, extreme cruelty, ex extreme torture. One of the places that we are not able to do at this time because we don't have government property is uh, we have been asked by many, many people to, to do Trinchera Beach which is near the, um, the area, near the Fresenius, uh, the new Fresenius kidney and the, the funeral home there. You know, uh, we can't do that. I mean, we, we have not identified government property yet that is, is fit for that. And that's one of the, the conditions that we have is that it has to be on government property because it has to be accessible to the public. Um, if any private citizen, and there have been private citizens who step forward and who would like these monuments put on their property and they are willing to give uh, public perpetual easement for these monuments. Um, we're trying to get that those details worked out, but these right now are the pro the projects that we have identified that we need to either begin or move into phase. Um, we are move into the second phase of these projects. Again, uh, we started this way back with this effort when um, uh, Governor Gutierrez and Mayor Bernardo, Mayor Ben Bernardo, uh, were part of our original group, Gordon Mayo. Um, so, you know, uh, basically, we, we walked among giants in, in putting this together, and I'd like to see that, you know, we carry this on for our people. 
Um, and if you have any questions about those particular monuments, monuments, I'd be very glad to answer them. But again, most of you are familiar with them because most of you have participated in um, in the in the memorials. Yeah, if I could just yeah, if I could just add, Senator, this is really about telling our story. It's as much about telling our story as it is about recording our history. And if we don't do these projects now, we run the risk of really losing a part of our heritage. All right, thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Willie and uh, Mr. Vice President. Uh, I'm only gonna ask the GBB uh, please provide us the cost. Um, we, we can go all day on listing of all the important things to do, but the cost is gonna be the key. And Senator Woody knows where I'm coming from with that one. Um, we can list everything, but I wanna make sure that there's sufficient funding. You've got, this bill identifies $10 million. Um, does anyone else like to speak on, on this bill um, from GVB before I ask uh, my colleagues to speak, ask questions? I don't see, uh, Governor Carl, uh, are, are you? Uh, Go ahead and unmute, uh, Governor, you, you got it? Uh, we're right. fine, uh, Senator, Mr. Chairman, we're ready for questions. All right, thank you. Uh, Senator Amanda, do you have any questions for the uh, GB, GBB folks? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I don't have any questions, but um, of course I'm in support of the bill as your co-sponsor, uh, wanting to help uh, GVB uh, with these additional projects to help make our destination uh, a better place for visitors. Uh, but also improving what we have for our local people. And I'm certainly most supportive of the uh, memorials that we will be able to help uh, our World War II memorials here that are a part of culture and history uh, that we will be able to memorialize the, the very, very um, important past of our people and share that with uh, our island's visitors. So I wanna thank everyone who's here today to give us this information and who has been uh, uh, pushing this effort with us. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Senator Jim Mullen, do you have any questions for the GVB folks, sir? Uh, thank you, this all sounds very exciting. I'm really looking forward to a lot of it uh, coming coming and really happening. Uh, I remember stories of my mom uh, saying many of the stories you did, uh, Mr. Flores there. So I appreciate it, especially the history and what the tourists are actually looking for. J just something really briefly, because I, I grew up in Tumon and I still live in Tumon and just on that project at Metopping and I can get more details later, but I'm just wondering if you can just add a little bit there about um, you know, the, the Cushing Zoo and if, if there's any uh, what what if there's any plans there to help improve that and there's also that uh, family property that's gated in in front uh facing the road there and finally just that uh little coban there if there's plans to uh since we're having the police station i, I guess relocate it, you know that frontage of the road just, just briefly and i can of course get more information from you later but i appreciate it thank you thank you mr chair all right thank you senator frank Bloss. Sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and to uh, all the members of uh, GVB, Governor Uncle Carl, Uncle Willie, Uncle Jerry, gee, they're all my relatives, <laughs> Um I, I want to thank you for a very informative presentation. Uh, I think that uh, if this goes in line with the conversation that we were having, we had this morning about, uh, you know, expanding our, our, our tourism base, but more so, you know, it, you know, I, I listened to all the, uh, the areas that uh, we'd like to be able to make improvements on so that we can showcase, you know, these area, uh, the, these, these World War II sites, if you will, for lack of a better term, because it's not just important for, for our tourists, which very recently, I guess, the, 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 is most especially the Japan market, we've seen a, a surge of individuals now who want to know the true history, uh, who want to know what, uh, what, what, what has happened, you know, or what happened over 80 years ago um, in our island. Uh, with no shame, and you know that's that's still they they they, they just want to know what had happened, but also for our, our our island residents and for our returning residents, you know, so that they can be like like Uncle Willie you had, you had you had said, you know, many of those in the generations after us, uh, 
don't even realize that there was a war that uh, that that was fought on the ground, very ground that they stand on. And uh, you know, to help them so that they can understand uh, who we are, why we are. Okay, um, it, it, that's that. This becomes very meaningful. It's not just as a tourist attraction, but as a history of our island. And I think this is money that's going to be very well spent uh, in being able to uh, improve, um, for lack of a better term, those attractions, okay, or those sites that are very meaningful and, and, and uh, you know, to, to not just us as people, but uh, to us as, as a society, as a world. So uh, I'm very excited about this. Um, you know, anything for, for, first off, you know, as you notice, for, to, to help to bring back our, our tourism industry, and, uh, but also to help to ready, ready that area, but also to in, improve our sites is, is something that I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stand behind, okay? Um, you, know, you know, Senator Willie, uh, it, with all the uh, sites and the attractions that you talked about, um, I guess we have to ask the question, is that $10 million enough or is the $1 million missed that Uncle Carl said was missing uh, have to be factored into all of this? Well, may, uh, may, Mr. Chair, may I, may I uh, respond? Okay, so- Yes, please. <laughs> thank you. So, you know, uh, Sabrina Senator Frank Blas, you know, uh, the effort that you have put forward is an effort to document you know, you have documented so many firsthand accounts that that is so invaluable to, to what we're doing. So what we are doing now is we would like to, as, as you know, as you mentioned, um, yeah, because, you know, we, we're still pushing forward as a foundation to, to um, uh, foundation to get the people involved, you know, to get the people involved because we need the people involved to make this successful. And I think that right now with the funding that you provide, of course, we'll always welcome more funding, but if we can provide this funding, we can at least get the monument markers up and we can at least get the basic monuments going and then we continue from there. But the idea is, for instance, in, in Alahan, they have very few now World War II survivors who can actually, who can physically come to the site. We would like to do this so that they can actually physically come to a site and they're, they're saying, oh, wow, yes, you know, they remember. And, and so I want to thank you um, for the documentation because without that documentation, you know, a lot of that would be lost. So uh, yes, so in, in answer to your question, of course, the money is not enough, but it'll certainly be enough to put forth the, the seed projects and to go to phase two to a couple of the projects. Well, if I can, if I can suggest, okay, um, I think that's, um, we may have forgotten when the World War II Recognition Act was, was passed by Congress, they also, the uh, Department of Interior was also told to set some money aside um, to the tune of, I'm gonna say $3 million because it's actually five, but save me two, okay, from, from my project and you can take three for yours. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. You know, so, so that we can document and we can, we can, we can improve these sites so that we can, we can tell those stories. That, that, that would help too. So, you know, Uncle Carl, maybe that, um, Governor, that, that's where we can get the additional one million. Okay, we get the DOI because there, there's supposed to be a five million dollar set aside. That we're, that, uh, that yes, we, but that might after. take longer. That might that might take longer, Senator. Um, Johnson Augustine is faster than the interior. <laughs> okay, good. Well, you know, maybe 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 Uncle Carl, if it was Donald Trump, we can get it right away. Anyway, so thank you very much, Mr. Chair. <laughs> thank you, Senator Frank. And and you know, and that's why I brought up about that we had a couple of bills that uh, we've already introduced. And then maybe what we need to do is take that project away from the GDB project and that, and that can give them that additional avenue to continue on. Um, Senator um, Joanne Brown, ma'am, do you have any questions for the GDB folks? No, I don't, Mr. Chairman. I, I think these are very good projects. I, I see the funding source also is from the earned income tax credit. I just wanna make sure that that's a viable source of funding. And if it is, I, I think once we reach our our level of what we're intending to receive, then I probably will stop my uh, supportive bills uh, if it's not a viable funding source. So I certainly appreciate all the efforts of GBB and certainly Governor Gutierrez and his uh, driving initiative as he always has to really excel at what he does. And 
promoting and improving, especially during this time when we don't have our tourists because of the uh, pandemic. Uh, you know, to really build up uh, our, our visitor sites and certainly tell the story of our history. I'm all very supportive of that. I just want to make sure it's a viable funding source. And as I mentioned, I think once we reach that limit, in all fairness to uh, all the entities that uh, bills are being introduced to fund, that it's viable money. I think at the end of the day, that's what we want to see, that it's real and it's tangible and that we can move forward with these projects. Uh, with that, I have no further comments and thank you to everyone for participating at this uh, late late time in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Brown. Senator Cello. Thank you, Mr. Welcome Chair. <laughs> and, and I have to, uh, yeah. Well, this is what you were talking about, Jerry. <laughs> so we yes. Were yes. During, okay, so um, now yes, I see exactly. what meant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, I too uh, share the same sentiments as, as Senator Brown with regards to a viable source with regards to the funding. And I took the liberty putting on the chat, uh, you know, Governor Gutierrez, there's a chat on the side. You're going to have to put press chat. <laughs> You're going to have someone to show you what that is. But I put the fiscal note that that is uh, maybe Josie can print that out. I know she's appreciative of anything that has to do with accounting. And it was uh, mentioned during uh, one of the other public hearings where the same funding source uh, that a recommendation was going to be uh, given to us on a letter from both Revin Tax, as far as Mike and Nicholas and everybody else under the sky to determine whether this money is in fact uh, can be used. And, and it's, it's quite concerning because I do, definitely don't want to stop the project of what, what you're uh, working on. And I see that uh, on the chat, there were different recommendations compared to what was on the bill. So I guess these are amendments. Um, I can assume these are amendments and yes. not addition to the list that's on the bill. <laughs> no, right? no, you, you're correct, uh, Senator Tello, because uh, like, like I said, as I mentioned to uh, Senator San Augustine uh, just a few minutes ago, when we got a call for this uh, recess and then rescheduling, I had alerted uh, his office that we would be making some amended suggestions to the list based on either funding already available for these projects or we believe uh, of lesser priority as compared to some of these because to be honest with you um, and to, to Senator Bloss's point, it's important that we tell our story and that we articulate the history and culture of Guam. But the important thing is to make sure that we record this for posterity. Because, you know, uh, Senator Willie, even though the Manamco today can enjoy this, once they pass on and we don't have any recorded documentation and monuments of what our history is, it will have been lost forever. And that's the tragic part about it. That's why it's really important for us to get on with it and to see and to capture as much as possible those who are still with us that can incorporate and enrich the interpretation. And if this goes back to the QR code that I was mentioning earlier, at each village entrance sign, we want to put in a QR code that thoroughly describes the village so the mayors can put as much of what's going on in their village as they can and put as much interpretive features of each village as they can. Uh, and it's just the, uh, it's just the imagination is the limit. Mm, absolutely. Well, there's no doubt about it that uh, keeping our history alive and especially for our next generation is very important. I think the mayors do that during liberation um, as well. Uh, we do that as well. We recognize those uh, memorial areas, Menengen um, and, and Jigo. There's been, you know, every year we make sure that these places are, are remembered and the people who passed away and to tell the story. Um, there's, you know, my, my concern right here is just looking at the two on the chat and then looking on the bill, um, what are you going to take away from the bill? And then what are you going to put from the chat that's on here? Lost Men of Hoggett Memorial, um, the Jigo entrance marker. Uh, I didn't see a testimony, Jerry. Do you have an updated testimony that you can provide on the chat so we can get one? Yeah, because we... We, we actually, I'm not sure whether you got it or not, but we had sent uh, a copy of this prepared testimony to, um, to you folks, but let me make sure that you have a, a copy of it. Because what happened was 
we also in our testimony listed those projects that we uh, had foregone, yeah. principally GVB centered, because we feel that um, there are other more important priorities, such as the projects that we've listed, number one, and number two, some of the other projects like the Matapen infiltration system is already being paid for by another source, right. freeing those funds for these other projects then. Right. I look forward to your testimony to uh, make those changes and recommendations to amend uh, the bill, the current bill. Um, and if you can e email it to me, I'd appreciate it. I really start, would like to start looking at it. Now, this project, the 10 million that you're requesting, has any of this money have been requested by, uh, well, requested from the governor? Uh, or have you requested, sorry, it's the end of the day. It's like my how many meetings. Have you requested from the governor any ARP funding for any of these projects? Uh, the ones that are on the chat, Jerry, not the one on the bill, the one on the chat. Um, the only thing that I can remember or I can think about is the, uh, the Matapeng project um, was funded by uh, another source uh, from the governor's office. Uh, this has to do with the Bureau of Plans and Statistics Infrastructure Plan, federally funded. Um, that is the main one, actually, that um, is being taken care of this. The rest of them is really internal to GVB, uh, and so we're prepared to forego that uh, in favor of really uh, getting these other projects uh, going. We believe it's probably more important. Okay. Um, and, and lastly, you know, I recognizing uh, former Senator Willie Flores. Good to see you, Willie. Um, I'm not sure, I didn't know you were at GVB. It says, <laughs> um, can you tell me your position here today? I, are you a board member? Are you working for GVB or? <laughs> I might've missed it. <laughs> no, I'm, the, uh, I'm the, the planning and engineering consultant for GVB. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, no, I, the, the reason why it said GVB was because um, I, uh, in order to get in, I had to get GVB to call um, uh, Senator Sanagasin's office to, to link me in, yeah. Oh, okay, so you're contracted uh, with uh, the Guam Visitors Bureau right now. Okay. Correct. And, and your planning and engineering consultant is basically just solely on, on this uh, um, project right here, or are you doing some other projects? Oh, no, no. Um, the... Um, the GVB, I don't know, maybe GVB should respond to this, but they put out uh, semi-annually, I believe, a, a list, a list, or they put out solicitation for engineering and uh, planning nice. consultation services. Okay. And okay. so we, we've been fortunate enough to have been worked with them for the last uh, several years. Okay. Yeah, if, if I could add to that, uh, Senator, sure. uh, when uh, President Carl and I came in, uh, we decided that we really needed some help on uh, A&E services because we had projects that we were working on, whether it's beach cleaning or landscape maintenance or other uh, disciplines that require A&E uh, capabilities. We don't have that at GVB. So we tendered out, an, uh, a con we tendered out um, requests for uh, this services and uh, there were three companies that responded and um, WB Flores ended up with the highest rated um, company and, and was the reason why he's retained. And we retain him and from time to time when we need this kind of assistance, we just issue a task order uh, and uh, basically that's how we engage him. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I've been at GBB and, and uh... The need for a, an A and D on board is is important. I mean, we we did the uh, brush shelters, I remember, and um, we really not everybody's an engineer and at GVB for sure. And uh, when you have members contributing on the subcommittees, um, they're just volunteers. You know, um, they're they're not always there or meet your timelines. But if someone's paid to do it, they have a timeline to meet. So no, I definitely understand the need for it, um, and uh, you know, appreciate. Uh, your explanation on this. Well, other than that, I think it's, um, I hate to be between dinner 
and, and yourself. So I'm going to cut mine short and, and please note that, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to finding out where this money is, if this money is a reality or not. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Governor uh, Guterres, I hope that uh, I know you've got the ear of um, our Governor Lou Leon Guerrero right now. Um, and I hope you can uh, try and get some additional funding to, um, with ARPA funding to pay for this project because um, looking at it, it's, it's truly an admirable and most especially um, important to our future of, of this island to keep our culture and our history alive. Uh, so I hope you can uh, ask her for additional funding, even if it's in piecemeal, you know, Governor, even if it's like maybe 400, I mean, 4 million now, and then 4 million next year, et cetera, because even if this funding is available, it won't be available, uh, that's in the bill currently, um, it won't be available and from what I gather until like February next year. But if you can get some funding from the governor, um, well, you know, we we are actively it, um, we are actively discussing the the, the potential twenty million dollars that she wants to uh, to uh, give to GVB from that those, that funding. Yes. The, uh, but also, uh, you know, for we're we're discussing which one you know we should be uh, focusing on on that twenty million dollars. Or part part of it is in this long range planning, and because she had a vision also, and uh, you know she uh, deserves that opportunity to to give us that vision, and we've been actively discussing that. But certainly she um, she understands that uh, the GDB is where uh, more money should go to. And uh, right. uh, as I as you said this morning, uh, I've already made a note that I will discuss that with her tomorrow. <laughs> uh, no, doesn't hurt to remind you, but I could tell you one thing: that money will be a whole lot faster than this bill if you ask her to work it out because she's got that money already in her hands. So <laughs> that will be a lot faster than this bill. Okay, thank you so much. Tijus Masi, be safe everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Senator I, um, I, um, I just wanted to add uh, real quickly that the, uh, the testimony uh, has been posted in the chat. Okay, yes, I know we, we can see it. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Vice President, and I'm in the same situation as Senator Frank Ross. All three gentlemen there are all my all my relatives, and they happen to be all my uncle also. But but being that I'm the chair, <laughs> Governor, I need a dollar amount, Uncle Willie, Senator Willie, and and Jerry, um, Mr. Vice President, Uncle Jerry. I need a dollar amount next to that that listing. Okay, um, the listing is great. If I don't get a dollar amount, we don't know how you want to how to spread it, and I know it's going to be thin. But yeah. we're going to work with you guys. Yes, Senator, Mr. Chairman, from the very top, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the amounts all the way down. Um, so you might see the, the, the top portion also change. Okay, not, not a problem. Not a problem, Governor. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Senator Amanda, you. You, you, I think you, you, you chat me. Uh, you wanted to ask. Slip one in, um, Senator Amanda. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. And uh, to the GVB management, of course, I am very supportive of, of this bill and this funding uh, that we're going to have for these projects. I was wondering if we have uh, the board support of these projects as well, because uh, usually the board is with us in these hearings. So I don't see them today, but I want to be assured that we have the board support for these projects. Yes, we actually uh, have been discussing this with some of the individual members, but as a board action, uh, we, can get the, we can get that support, I, I believe. Okay, thank you very much. I would appreciate that. All right, and, th and thank you, my colleagues, for participating today. I would like to thank the GVB folks for uh, attending the virtual public hearing for Bill uh, 200. The committee will continue to receive uh, testimony. Uh, please submit your testimony to the mayoral and the Guam legislature or through email at senatorjoesanogstein at gmail.com. Um, I want to thank everyone again for attending the virtual public hearing and for providing feedback and suggestions. The public hearing is now adjourned. The time now is 5.37. Sidzus Mazi, thank you, Uncle Carl, Uncle, Uncle Jerry, Uncle Willie, and Josie and Nico for participating, and my colleagues for all being here. Please have a nice and um, safe day. Take care.